Good morning. It's Thursday. We're getting ready to head into the weekend tomorrow. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. I've got a good friend of mine coming to visit. We're going to do some girl hair stuff. I'm excited. So I hope your weekend is going to be good. Today, I want to talk about something so tiny, yet so big. The parable of the mustard seed. I know you've all heard of this, and I don't know about you, but I am a big learner when it comes to parables. I love that Jesus taught this way, because in my life, I constantly use analogies to teach my kids, to explain things. I'm sure strangers are like, oh, okay, we get it. You can stop talking, because I'm trying to explain something simple, and I generally will branch off into some analogy. But today we're going to explore this parable a little bit because there are a lot of different meanings and depth to this parable. That's another thing I love about the way Jesus taught. It's you have to really think. You have to dig deep because what it appears to be on the surface, when you keep digging, you keep finding hidden meanings in all of his parables. But this one, uh, in Mark uh, chapter 4, verse 30, again he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like, or what parable shall we use to describe it? It's like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants with such big branches that the birds can perch. Wow, that's so cool. Um, I don't know if you've ever uh, attempted to grow a garden. We had gardens when I was growing up, and I've attempted to grow things from seed. I'm not very good at it, but that's beside the point. So I don't know if you've ever noticed that seeds are so little. Most seeds are little, okay? Well, you know, little tiny things, like you, you just gobbed of them just fit in the palm of your hand. Okay, well, the mustard seed is the tiniest of all seeds. It's just like teeny tiny. But yet, in the garden, it grows to be the biggest plant. So, what is Jesus trying to explain to us? Well, a lot of things. Number one, um, we're tiny in God's kingdom. We're tiny. But the things that we do, the works that we do here on earth, has the potential to grow into something so big and so strong. So, don't sell yourself short when you think, well, I'm insignificant. You're not. You may be little in the bigger scheme of things, but you grow big and strong and mighty. It just depends on where you plant your seed. We'll get to that in a minute. Something else about the mustard seed and the plant that it grows. Okay, so these branches that it grows, they're, they're strong and they're mighty. So when you plant your good seed, you grow branches that others can hold on to. You grow branches that can support other people. You grow branches that support other good works. Well, guess what else these large branches do? They cast shade on the evil. They cast shade on the bad plants that can't grow because they can't receive sunlight. They can't get the nutrients they need to grow. So the bad plants, the weeds that are under here, they die out. I want my branches to be strong. I want to be able to help others. And I just want to smother out all the bad that's underneath. So the um, things that are trying to hold you back, boom, they're going down. So how do we keep strengthening the branches? Well, by studying God's word, duh, um, <laughs> you strengthen, and not only you strengthen, you grow. God's word is like fertilizer for the plant. It goes to the roots of the plant, and the plant grows stronger. Your life gets stronger. Your walk with God gets stronger. Everything that's good grows stronger. So it doesn't matter how tiny you are because those who give little are mightier than those that give riches. And 
Where do we see this? In Mark 12, 42, Jesus talks about the woman in the temple who gives the two coins. And he says this was more than all these wealthy people who gave multiple coins. Well, they're like, that doesn't even make sense. We can see that we gave more. We gave a hundred coins and she gave two. Yeah, well, they gave a hundred, but they had a thousand. She gave two. She only had two. I don't know if you're any good at math, but if you check the percentage there, she gave 100%. And they did not. And that's what Jesus is telling us. Even the smallest amount can be so good. Now, let's quickly flip this around. And what if we take our seed and we don't use it for good? What if we plant our seed in bad, evil ground? Well, the same thing happens. The plant is going to grow. Jesus tells us in uh, Mark chapter 4, 26 through 29, that when you throw the seeds out there, you go to bed at night. Guess what? The plant grows. It's going to grow without your help. It's just going to grow. So this can be said for evil as well. If you plant your little tiny evil seed, it can also grow. It can shade out the good. It can cause the good in your life to smother out. It can be something tiny, but it has a way of growing into something big. So the question is, where do you want to plant your seed? Do you want to plant it in the bad ground and grow evil? Or do you want to plant it in the good ground? I want to have like flowers <laughs> without pollen and um, strong branches. I want something strong that other people can hold on to so that when I see someone else failing or falling, I can be like, here, hang on. And they can grab a hold and it's something strong that can pull them up, that can support them until they're able to grow their own seed and support themselves. There's so much that can be said about this parable. So think about it. It's springtime. Everything's growing. Where do you want to plant your seed? And that's our thought for today.